welcome to this discussion, this podcast, this YouTube, whatever you want to call it. I'm Erin mm -hmm. Rose. I am the Light Witch. And today I'm introducing Heidi Trigar. And Hello. Heidi and <laughs> welcome, <laughs> Heidi. Hi. Um, Heidi and I have known each other for quite some time now, many years when we were teaching yoga in Melbourne together. Mm -hmm. And I think I really remember you, Heidi, from being just one of my favorite teachers that I love to go to and practice with. Mm -hmm. You brought a lot of depth, a lot of authenticity to your classes. Um, I loved the, the flow and I loved what you also just contributed spiritually and your wisdom in the classes as well. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that was able to, I don't know, we, we just, I guess, became, became closer as I taught as well, began to taught, uh, teach. And then, um, yeah, and then we've just stayed in touch because it's just felt right. Um, Thank you I, for the beautiful introduction. Was oh, <laughs> I was asking you before, um, I've noticed on your Instagram that um, because you've you've really, oh, that's what, that's what I remember actually. I remember that really special time you invited me to someone's house. Mm -hmm. It was a, a beautiful house, but it was a little private gathering and we did Kirtan. And it was just a musical night, just very casual. It was just a few friends. And I went and it was a little bit out of my comfort zone because I haven't, I don't, yeah, really get into the the, the mantra and, and that as much. But you were, yeah, it was just such an inviting space to come into. So that's how I knew you when I left and came to Byron. And then you really, I felt like grew into that space. Mm. How do you feel how you've evolved in this yeah, time? That's God, that feels like a million years ago now too, mm. doesn't it? You remember um, that night? Yeah, it was, mm. that was actually so amazing, so mm. amazing. Um, yeah, I feel like Bhakti Yoga kind of called me because I came from a background that I was, I was a singer for a little while in my life when I was younger. And that was, and I, I, I had a really kind of, I guess, traumatizing experience where the guy, I was singing in a band and the guy who was the leader of the band called me and sacked me from the band and said to me, um, we're sacking you from the band, Heidi, because we found someone who can actually sing. Oh, oh my God. Oh. So I, I straight away went into, oh my God, I'm the worst singer and I'm never going to sing again and thought I would never sing again until, you know, fast forward many years later, I went to a New Year's at ashram at the ashram for new year's eve and i stayed for like two nights or something and they they were practicing kirtan on new year's eve and then i felt like i was starting to find my voice again and mm. realizing that how beautiful it is when we can express without the need or the feeling that we're being judged right mm. Mm. and the sitting up sing, standing up there on stage and singing to an audience wearing kind of like a costume i guess or a mask even, you could say, or sitting down on the floor with everybody else who is exactly the same and there's no judgment, there's no, it doesn't matter how brilliantly or how terribly I sing, it's all about the the bhav, we call it in yoga. It's like this um, uh, feeling of, how, of what it is within, mm. through the vibration and the resonancy of the sound. So, that kind of shifted my whole perspective. So then when I came back home, I just searched everywhere for, for bhakti. I searched everywhere for kirtan and I found it and then I started practicing it and then I eventually started playing it and then leading kirtans, which is one of my favorite things to do in the whole wide world. And I still do it and I love it very, very much. It's kind of like a part of me. It's, it feels like it's brought me back home to where I feel like, I feel like the, the reason why I learned how to sing when I was little because I went to a dance school where we had to sing as part of the dancing school and my mum took me to singing lessons when I was like eight but I feel like all of those lessons that I've had have just accumulated to bring me to this point so that I can mm. share this practice as opposed to entertaining people with words that I feel sometimes are very meaningless mm. and for anyone listening out there and has never been to a Kirtan before, what are some of the feedback from people going to these and their feeling afterwards? Because I know whenever I've gone, it's 
been an, like therapy, an absolute blossoming and opening, oh, especially yeah. what you were saying. I really resonate with the non-judgment and that you can literally just make sounds and it feels so liberating yes. um, and so accepting, like you're just in it with everyone else. And so it feels like a belonging as well. Yeah. And, and it's like, it doesn't matter if you can sing. It doesn't matter if you know the words. It doesn't matter if you can um, repeat the melody back. All that matters, or, or all all there is in that room, is absolute connection to the places within that are often unseen, unheard, and unfelt. Mm-hmm. So we go within to find those beautiful places that are just really call it love, because there's there's no judgment in there. And there's no that all there is is really spaciousness to be to just be and become who you truly are the feedback is usually like that the words that come out I often like ask everybody at the end how do you how do you feel describe in one word often the words are love peace connection community um bliss joy those kind of words it's hard not to feel like that when you have there's unlimited potential just to express yourself in the way that feels right for you. It's just so beautiful. And you're being held in this container where there are people around you that are exactly the same. And it, again, it doesn't matter if you're not a singer. It's, it's really literally all about the sense of feeling connected to, to all, like yoga, mm. body, mind, spirit, mm. you and me, us and them. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, everything gets connected. Yoga. Mm. I love it so much. It's so amazing. It's like it really ha- it's really changed my whole life. It's changed my whole life for the better. And I love it. Mm. I was gonna ask with the with the night or the evening of uh Kertan, is it like a is it sort of like a gentle and then a rise? You know, I, a lot of what I um remember is just being up dancing and and joyful and moving my body and standing but then there's also those times where we're we're sitting and it's just this beautiful um Mm. I don't know like I was the word that's coming to me is like a romance within myself and Mm. just like sitting there and holding um so is there that natural wave that occurs yeah I think I, I, I never plan them we go in and then I just feel into the space and depending on what the vibe is like that particular day will you know go wherever we need to go but usually in one particular kirtan so one song there'll be different often there'll be like moments where we're really really fast and vibey and everyone's up dancing and then there'll be other moments where it's really mellow and chilled and slow and soft and it can kind of fluctuate through those two points for the whole mantra or it can just go up and down or it can just stay some some um kirtans can just be like and also it depends on the particular energy that we're chanting to so if for instance we're chanting to ganesha they'll be often like a softer kind of or not a softer like a more um regular beat but also it can go up and it can go down but then when it's you know something more vibey it might pop somewhere or I don't know it's always different and that's Mm. also what I love about it it Mm. doesn't have to be it's not like Bikram yoga where it has to be the same every single time it's literally really moving and pliable like tantra it's just moving in the space in a way that it needs to go Mm. and it always works out perfectly Mm. and whatever I guess happens it sounds like what's happening in the vibration and the frequency of our own uh, our own bodies is that it's an uplifting because of the words that you were using before like joy and bliss and love so mm. wherever we're like whatever we come in with we're transforming the energy through the vibration of sound and singing to to uplift our vibration and frequency so I guess that we can be more attracting to that um, that sort of energy outside of ourselves as well oh my god yes absolutely 100% you know that to be true because you've experienced that so i mean we all sort of experience that when we raise our vibration whether it's through mantra or yeah. whatever it is but you know like and i think every form of yoga can only raise our vibration 
Mm. You can only do that. It's not, I just don't, I don't, I don't believe that it can lower our vibe. Yeah. So when we're, they say that Bhakti yoga is the quickest and easiest way in or the quickest and easiest way to the divine. But I feel like we also can't forget about asana because it's so important to keep our home, you know, strong and soft yeah. and flexible and everything as well, the home that we're living yeah. in this life. Yeah. And also like all of the other aspects, like we can't forget about our can't forget about our mind and we need to continue to connect there too. And we need to kind of find all of these aspects that work together for us individually because everybody's different as well. But when you said depending on where you are in your body frequent with your frequency, there is no doubt, even if you're vibing really high, there's no doubt that you will still go a little higher when you chant mantra. I mm. just really, truly believe that. Mm. That's it's a really great point for not just being in the, the love state. You've, you've got to also be practicing the discipline of asana and practicing mm. the discipline of meditation for the mind mm. so that we can be well-balanced, equilibrium, because otherwise yeah. we'd be a bit too smudgy and yes. fluffy if we were just in the bliss and the love all the time. We've got to, like, yeah, bring that balance of, yeah, that's... So so um, before I move on from, from Keratan, where can people find it or find you and, and how often do you do, do you do it? So I, I, the, I mean, I have a website, which is updated reasonably frequently but instagram's the best because i'm constantly putting stories about what's happening up i've got a kirtan this saturday night in melbourne and they're reasonably regular but again, it's just starting to come back into yeah. flow again it's been a little bit of a while of of non-flow so now we're starting to move back into the flow and it's starting to happen more regularly but Good. Yeah, for, uh, for Kirtans and all of those cute little events, more than cute, but I like the way cute events. Instagram's probably the easiest, although they yeah. will be on my website as well. Yeah, great. So you're ma mainly in Melbourne, but sometimes you do bless us with your um, presence in Byron. Yeah. Yeah, cool. 